Today we're checking out Gener Genetic Engineering Will Change Everything Forever by uh, Kurt Kaza. I don't know if, that, if I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but um, yeah, that's why I don't really have a lot to say about genetic engineering. I know it's like they make hearts, they can code the DNA to like no more cancer, no more genetic diabetes, stuff like that. But yeah, you know, let's watch. Imagine you were alive back in the 1980s and were told that computers would soon take over everything from shopping to dating and the stock market. That billions of people would it. be connected via a kind of web. That you would own a handheld device orders of magnitude more powerful than supercomputers. It would seem absurd, but then all of it happened. Mm -hmm. Science fiction became our reality and we don't even think about it. We're at a similar point today with genetic engineering. So let's talk about it. Where it came from, what we're doing right now, and about a recent breakthrough that will change how we live and what we perceive as normal forever. That's so crazy though, and I, I have so much mixed opinions about genetic engineering though. Genetic modification. Humans have been engineering life for thousands of years. Through selective breeding, we strengthened useful traits in plants and animals. We became very good at this, but never truly understood how it works until we discovered the code of life, deoxyribonucleic acid, DNA, a complex molecule that guides the growth, development, function, and reproduction of everything alive. Information is encoded in the structure of the molecule. Four nucleotides are paired and make up a code that carries instructions. Change the instructions and you change the being carrying it. As oh, soon as man. DNA was discovered, people tried to tinker with it. In the 1960s, scientists bombarded plants with radiation to cause random mutations in the genetic code. The idea was to get a useful plant variation by pure chance. Sometimes it actually worked too. In the 70s, but scientists was inserted DNA snippets into bacteria, plants, and animals to study and modify them for research, medicine, agriculture, and for fun. The earliest genetically modified animal was born in 1974, it's making rice a standard rats. tool for research, saving millions of lives. In the 80s, we got commercial. The first patent was given for a microbe engineered to absorb oil. Today, we produce many chemicals by means of engineered life, like life-saving clotting factors, growth hormones, and insulin, all things we had but to harvest from the organs of animals before that. The day. first food modified in the lab went on sale in 1994, the Flavor Saver Tomato, a tomato given a much longer shelf life via an extra gene that suppressed the buildup of a rotting enzyme. But GM food and the controversy surrounding them deserve a video of their own. In the 1990s, there was also a brief foray into human engineering. To treat maternal infertility, babies were made that carried genetic information from three humans, making three? them the first. See, that's that's kind of that's kind of the place where they lose me with these like genetic engineering stuff. It's like I would, yeah, it's cool. It's like a wood, double sided sword, like. Okay, I don't want some random kid to be born with cancer. Like, I don't want that. But then at the same time, it's like, it's so like, it's so, if it, I mean, I'm sure it can happen with the right stuff, but then there's always like errors. And then what if you, what if the kid's born without cancer, but he has like four arms or whatever, like DNA from three people is so, that's strange. It's like you get traits from your grandpa and from your neighbor. Ah, oh, that's crazy. Humans ever that's too to wild. have three genetic parents. Today there are muscled pigs, fast-growing salmon, featherless chickens, and see-through frogs. But then the kid wouldn't even On live long with that. They made things glow in the dark. Fluorescent zebra fish are available for as little as ten dollars. All of this hmm. is already very impressive. But until recently, gene editing was extremely expensive, complicated, and took a long time to do. This has now changed with a revolutionary new technology now entering the stage, CRISPR. CRISPR. Overnight, like the cereal. costs of engineering have shrunk by 99%. Instead of a year, it takes a few weeks to conduct experiments, and basically everybody with a lab can do it. 
It's hard to get across how big a technical revolution CRISPR is. It literally so has the potential to change kids. humanity forever. Why did this sudden revolution happen, and how does it work? Oh man, that would actually be bad in a way though. That means Bacteria no more sports. Bacteria and viruses have been fighting since the dawn of life. So-called bacteriophages, or phages, hunt bacteria. In the ocean, phages kill 40% of them every single day. Phages do this by inserting their own genetic code into the bacteria and taking them over to use them as factories. The bacteria try to resist, but fail most so of the wrong. time because their protection tools are too weak. But sometimes bacteria survive an attack. Only if they do so can they activate Looks their like most effective antivirus system. They save a part of the virus DNA in their own genetic code in a DNA archive called CRISPR. Here, it's stored safely until it's needed. When the virus attacks again, the bacterium quickly makes an RNA copy from the DNA archive and arms a secret weapon, a protein called Cas9. The protein now scans the bacterium's insides for signs of the virus invader by comparing every bit of DNA it finds to the sample from the archive. When it finds a 100% perfect match, it's activated and cuts out the virus DNA, making it useless, protecting the bacterium against the attack. What's yeah, what if the, the virus also made precise, a different one? Almost like a DNA surgeon. The revolution began when scientists figured out that the CRISPR system is programmable. You can just give it a copy of DNA you want to modify and put the system into a living cell. If the old oh. techniques of genetic manipulation were like a map, CRISPR is like a GPS system. Aside from being precise, cheap and easy, CRISPR offers the ability to edit live cells, to switch genes on and off, and target and study particular DNA sequences. Yo, it's okay, bro, assuming this happened, it's like, it'd be like the purpose of everything. Cause like now, if you want your baby to be like a different race, you would be like, okay, give my kid blue eyes, give him all this type of hair, make him the fastest man, like give him genetic, like no more short people, like make him the strongest guy, give him those type of genes because you could do all that. That'd mean no sports. I mean, sports would still happen, but like everybody's big and tall. So it's like, there's really, everybody would just get back to looking the same and boring and all that it killed diversity in a way because i think it killed racism too in a way because if, if everybody just gets genetically engineered to be like a white person you're all white it doesn't matter if you a black parent gave birth to you with a few modifications you're all white because it, it's one gene that determines your so color it works for every type of cell microorganisms plants animals or humans but despite the revolution CRISPR is for science, it's still just a first-generation tool. More precise tools are already being created and used as we speak. But then this would kill business, though. In 2015, though. scientists Ooh. used CRISPR to cut the HIV virus out of living cells from patients in the lab, proving that it was possible. Only about a year later, they carried out a larger-scale project with rats that had the HIV virus in basically all of their body cells. By simply injecting CRISPR into the rat's tails, they were able to remove more than 50% of the virus from cells all over the body. In a few decades, a CRISPR therapy might cure HIV. And other retroviruses, viruses that hide but inside human DNA... do you think DNA, people like want herbal. that? Not people. Do you think uh, these organizations want that? Hell no. They don't want cancer or, or like HIV or any of those to be cured. Because, bro, the money they'd lose so much profit because it's like damn that's crazy though because because like let's say because i know cancer at least trillions per year because bro like, it's wild and you never get well it's only like a select few that really survive and then they even get cancer twice so that's so like strange if it was able if they were able to cure that a lot of ho bro hospitals would get out of business too because it's like they make a body, let's say you engineer a body that's like able to, it has a stronger immune system and it's like, 
it can live in any condition like i don't know i don't know i'm just getting wild right here with my imagination but like i know it wouldn't be like superpowers obviously but like it would cut out a lot of hospitals and a lot of businesses that like need to treat people because a lot of stuff that you need to get treated for you won't need because you'll be born perfect could be basically. eradicated this way because if you get born on perfect defeat one and, of our like, worst enemies cancer your cancer occurs when cells refuse to die and keep multiplying while concealing themselves from the immune system CRISPR gives us the means to edit your immune cells and make them better cancer hunters getting rid of cancer might eventually mean getting just a couple of injections of a few thousand of your own cells that have been engineered in the lab to heal you for good the first clinical trial for a CRISPR cancer treatment on human patients was approved in early 2016 in the US. Not even a month later, Chinese scientists announced that they would treat lung cancer patients with immune cells modified with CRISPR in August 2016. Things are picking course, up pace quickly. Uh... And then there are genetic diseases. There are thousands of them, and they range from mildly annoying to deadly or entail decades of suffering. With a powerful tool like CRISPR, we may be able to end this. Maybe. Over 3,000 genetic diseases are caused by a single incorrect letter in your DNA. Right. We are already building a modified version of Cas9 that is made to change just a single letter, fixing the disease in the cell. In a decade or two, we could possibly cure thousands of diseases forever. But all of these medical applications have one thing in common. They are limited to the individual and die with them, except if you use them on reproductive cells or very early embryos. But CRISPR can and probably will be used for much more. The creation of modified humans, designer babies, and will mean gradual but irreversible changes to the human gene pool. That's so like scary to me in a way, designer babies. You're custom made to no edit the genome no more of a human old. embryo already exist, though the technology is still in its early stages. But it has already been attempted twice. In 2015 and 2016, Chinese scientists experimented with human embryos and were partially successful on their second attempt. They showed the enormous challenges we still face in gene editing embryos, but also that scientists are working on solving them. This is like the so computer in the 70s. There will be better computers. Regardless of your personal take on genetic engineering, it will affect you. Modified humans could alter the genome of our entire species because their engineered traits will be passed on to their children and could spread well, over generations, perfect. slowly modifying the whole gene pool of humanity. It well, will start slowly. Either, you the first designer babies will not be overly designed. It's most likely that they will be created to eliminate a deadly genetic disease running in a family. As the technology progresses and gets more refined, more and more people may argue that not using genetic modification is unethical because it condemns children to preventable suffering and death and denies them the cure. But as soon as the first engineered kid is born, a door is opened that can't be closed anymore. Early on, vanity traits will mostly be left alone. But as genetic modification becomes more accepted and our knowledge of our genetic code enhances, the temptation will grow. If you make how good is this um i don't know that, that kind of like i want i want to support this like i strongly want to support this but at the same time i'm like deep down i'm thinking i'm like oh whoa obviously i don't want because i mean you know people are gonna get creative with this obviously like after the okay diseases are gone let's say in a in a perfect scenario diseases are gone no more of that um after all the bad stuff is gone, they're gonna try to get creative. Can we give this kid superpowers? Can we do this? They will create a perfect human type stuff, like a robot human. And I could see this going left. I could see this becoming bad. Let's say, cause there's traits that can help you like focus. Like, cause you know, we get distracted so easily. You know, I'm, I'm looking at, I'm doing schoolwork. I get distracted. I don't want to work. I'm lazy. Another kid would get engineered to like just focus like a working machine. And you're like, whoa, well, we'll see how this goes. Your offspring the immune to Alzheimer. Why not the also give them an enhanced metabolism? Why not throw in perfect eyesight? How about height or muscular structure? Bro, like I said, everybody will be the same. the gift of extraordinary intelligence? 
Huge <laughs> changes are made right. as a result of the personal decisions of millions of individuals that accumulate. This is a slippery slope. Modified humans could become the new standard. But as engineering becomes more normal and our knowledge improves, we could solve the single biggest mortality risk factor, aging. Two-thirds uh -oh. of the 150,000 people who die today will die of age-related causes. Currently, we think aging, aging is caused by the accumulation in of damage to our cells, like DNA breaks and the systems responsible for fixing those so this is going in a time. way. But there are also genes that directly path. affect aging. A combination of genetic engineering and other therapy could stop or slow down aging, maybe even reverse it. We know from nature that there are animals immune to aging. Maybe we could even borrow a few genes for ourselves. Uh -oh. Some scientists even think biological aging could be something that eventually just stops being a thing. We would still die at some point, but instead of doing so in hospitals at age 90, we might be able to spend a few thousand years with our loved ones. Research thousand, into this huh? is in its infancy. And many scientists are rightly skeptical about the end of aging. The challenges are enormous, and maybe it is unachievable. But it is wow. conceivable that people alive today might be the first to profit from effective anti-aging therapy. All we might need is for someone to convince a smart billionaire to make it their next problem to solve. On a bigger scale, we certainly could solve many problems by having a modified population. Engineered humans might be better equipped to cope with high-energy food, eliminating many diseases of civilization like obesity. In possession of a modified immune system, with a library of potential threats, we might become immune to most diseases that haunt us today. Even further into the future, we could engineer humans to be equipped for extended space travel and to cope with different conditions on other planets. This which is would so be extremely like. helpful in keeping us alive Look, it's in a our fish human. universe. Okay, okay, this is too creative. This is too much, man. I don't Still, a fish. few major challenges await us. Some technological, some ethical. Many of you watching will feel uncomfortable and fear that we will create a world in which we will reject non-perfect humans and pre-select features and qualities based on our idea of what's healthy. The well, thing is, we are already living same. in this world. Tests for dozens of genetic diseases or complications have become standard for pregnant women in much of the world. Often the mere suspicion of a genetic defect can lead to the end of a pregnancy. But like... You know, I don't know, this is a weird take, but I feel like those imperfect imperfections and stuff, those are what make humans so, like, good. Like, I, you know, because, like, I love errors in a way. Like, I don't want, of course, I don't want, like, my kid to be, like, autistic or whatever, uh, because I, I don't, I just don't think that's cool. Uh, but with all those, like, I love all variants of humans, but and then if we get this chance to modify them it's just like your next door neighbor will pick the same traits with like their kid as you they're like okay i want them to have this i want them to be strong and then you're gonna be at a point where you're like yo this kid doesn't even look like me it's just a just i drew it, it like you just drew a drawing and you're like yo doctor i want these traits that's like i saw this there's this movie there's this movie i saw about this stuff but I'll Take tell you Down syndrome, it. for example, one of the most common genetic defects. In Europe, about 92% of all pregnancies where it's detected are terminated. The decision to terminate a pregnancy is incredibly personal, but it's important to acknowledge the reality that we are pre-selecting humans based on medical conditions. There is also no use in pretending this will change, so we have to act carefully and respectfully as we advance the technology and can make more and more selections. But none of this will happen soon. As powerful as CRISPR is, and it is, it's not infallible yet. Wrong edits still happen, as well as unknown errors that can occur anywhere in the DNA and might go unnoticed. The gene edit might achieve the desired result, disabling a disease, but also might accidentally trigger unwanted changes. We just don't know enough yet about the complex interplay of our genes to avoid unpredictable consequences. Working on accuracy and monitoring methods is a major concern as the first human trials begin. And since we've discussed a possible positive future, there are darker visions too. Imagine what a state like North Korea could do if they embraced genetic engineering. 
could a state oh, cement man. its rule forever by forcing gene editing on their subjects? What would stop I know a totalitarian Kim regime from that. engineering an army of modified oh, super soldiers? Look it at this, man. Theory. Scenarios like this one are far, far off into the future, if they ever become possible at all. But the basic proof of concept for genetic engineering like this already exists today. The technology really is that powerful. While this might be a tempting reason to ban genetic editing and related research, that would certainly be a mistake. Banning human genetic engineering would well, only lead to science wandering really... off to a place with jurisdiction and rules that we're uncomfortable with. Only by participating can we make sure that further research is guided by caution, reason, oversight and transparency. Do you feel I have so many now? mixed opinions. Most of us have something bit. wrong with them. In the future that lies ahead of us, would we have been allowed to exist? The technology is certainly a bit scary, but we have a lot to gain and genetic engineering might just be a step in the natural evolution of intelligent species in the universe. We might end disease. We could extend our life expectancy by centuries and travel to the stars. There's no need to think small when it comes to this topic. Whatever your opinion on genetic engineering, the future is approaching no matter what. What has been insane science fiction is about to become our new reality. A reality full of opportunities and challenges. Hmm. Oh, you know, I Videos actually... Like this would not be possible without viewers. You know, like, I have a, like a, if humans got that good and their immune systems and bodies got, like, super perfect, I'm sure the disease of, I mean, some bacteria would definitely evolve, would be, like, something that lives in you, because bacteria can't go away, obviously. But it had, I mean, some, they'd also get super strong, so, there's a, then there's, um, stuff, and these babies... How how long would they even last? It feels like fake to me. It feels like fake children. I don't know, man. This is kind of scary. But yeah, well, I'm definitely I'm uh, I support the removing diseases. You know, cancer, all that stuff is bad. I hope those patients get well soon. But yeah, thanks for watching and have a nice day.